Welcome to UK Learnings. After watch this video, please subscribe to our channel to give us your support. And don't forget to click the bell icon to get upcoming videos. Good luck for your exam. When would you inflate your tires above the recommended normal pressure? A. When you'll be driving in cold weather. B. When the roads are slippery. C. When you'll be driving fast for a long distance. D. When the tire tread is worn below 2 mm. The correct answer is C. When you'll be driving fast for a long distance. Explanation. Check the vehicle handbook. This should give you guidance on the correct tire pressures for your vehicle. There may be recommendations to increase the tire pressure when carrying heavy loads or when traveling continuously at higher speeds, such as when using a motorway. There's been a crash and a motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. What's the main reason you should leave their helmet in place? A. They may not want it removed. B. They'll lose body heat if you remove their helmet. C. You'll damage the helmet if you remove it incorrectly. D. Removing it could cause a more serious injury. The correct answer is D. Removing it could cause a more serious injury. Explanation. When someone is injured, any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided as it could make injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove it, it's generally safer to leave a motorcyclist's helmet in place. What could you do to reduce the volume of traffic on the roads? A. Use a car with a smaller engine. B. Share a car when possible. C. Travel by car at all times. D. Drive in a bus lane. The correct answer is B. Share a car when possible. Explanation. Traffic congestion is an inevitable consequence of the increasing volume of traffic on the road. To help reduce the volume of traffic, you could try sharing a car, walking or cycling, using public transport. Your support will encourage us to make more videos. Please don't forget to subscribe. How to controlling the vehicle's speed when going down a long, steep hill. A. Switch the engine off and coast to save fuel. B. Use a combination of a lower gear and the foot brake. C. Engage the highest gear to keep the engine revs as low as possible. D. Pump the foot brake to prevent the brakes from overheating. The correct answer is B. Use a combination of a lower gear and the foot brake. Explanation. Using a lower gear will allow the engine braking to assist the brakes in keeping the vehicle vehicle's speed under control. Avoid coasting with the clutch held down or rolling in neutral, as there will then be no engine braking. What should you do when you're driving in foggy conditions? A. Avoid using dipped headlights. B. Keep two seconds behind other vehicles. C. Leave plenty of time for your journey. D. Follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. The correct answer is C. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Explanation. If you're planning to make a journey when it's foggy, Listen to the weather reports on the radio or television. Don't travel if visibility is very poor or your trip isn't necessary. If you do travel, leave plenty of time for your journey. You're driving at night on an unlit road. What should you do if you're following a slower moving vehicle? A. Use dipped headlights. B. Use full beam headlights. C. Flash your headlights. D. Switch off your headlights. The correct answer is A. Use dipped headlights. Explanation. If you follow another vehicle with your headlights on full beam, they could dazzle the driver. Leave a safe distance and ensure that the light from your dipped beam falls short of the vehicle in front. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver behind you is following very closely? A. Signal left and wave the following driver past. B. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. C. Slow down, 
gradually increasing the gap between your vehicle and the one in front. D. Ignore the following driver and continue to drive within the speed limit. The correct answer is C. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between your vehicle and the one in front. Explanation. It can be worrying if the driver behind hasn't left enough room to stop if you have to brake hard. For example, in an emergency, driving defensively, you should give yourself a greater safety margin by easing back from the vehicle in front. If an emergency arises, you'll be able to slow down more gradually, giving the driver behind more time to respond. What will happen if the power assisted steering system fails? A. The steering will become hard to turn. B. The tires will wear more. C. The steering mechanism will lock. D. The steering will become very loose. The correct answer is A. The steering will become hard to turn. Explanation. Most power steering systems only work when the engine is running. If the power steering system fails, or the engine cuts out, much more effort will be needed to steer the vehicle. What should you do if you take a wrong turning that leads you into a one-way street? A. Turn around in a side road. B. Reverse into a driveway. C. Reverse out of the road. D. Continue to the end of the road. The correct answer is D. Continue to the end of the road. Explanation. If you realize you've taken the wrong turn when you're driving in a one-way street, don't reverse or turn your vehicle around. Drive on and find another route. How should you drive in areas where there are traffic calming measures? A. At the speed limit. B. In third gear. C. At a reduced speed. D. In the center of the road. The correct answer is C. At a reduced speed. Explanation. Traffic calming measures, such as road humps chicanes and narrowings, are intended to slow traffic down and to protect vulnerable road users. Maintain a reduced speed until you reach the end of the traffic calming zone. You're intending to turn right at a crossroads. An approaching driver is also turning right. What danger exists if you turn in front of each other? A. The approaching vehicle will block your view of oncoming vehicles. B. The view in your offside mirror will be blocked. C. The angle of turn will be tighter than if you turned behind each other. D. The time it takes to turn will be increased. The correct answer is A. The approaching vehicle will block your view of oncoming vehicles. Explanation. Take care to understand what the approaching driver intends as this may determine your approach. Turning behind the approaching vehicle, wherever possible, will ensure that your view of the road ahead isn't blocked. At some junctions, the layout may make it difficult to turn this way. If this is the case, be prepared to pass in front of the other vehicle. At some junctions, the lane markings direct you to turn this way. Who's responsible for ensuring that a 16-year-old passenger wears a seat belt? A. The car owner. B. The car driver. C. The parent. Guardian. D. The 16-year-old. The correct answer is D. The 16-year-old. Explanation. Passengers over 14 years old are responsible for wearing a seat belt when traveling in a vehicle unless they're exempt. A responsible driver will make sure that passengers have fastened their seat belts before setting off. What's the national speed limit for a car on a single carriageway? A. 70 miles per hour. B. 60 miles per hour. C. 40 miles per hour. D. 50 miles per hour. The correct answer is B. 60 miles per hour. Explanation. On a single carriageway road, the national speed limit will apply, unless signs indicate otherwise, for a car. The limit is 60 miles per hour unless the car is towing a trailer, in which case the limit is reduced to 50 miles per hour. 
where would parking be likely to cause an obstruction? A. Where the curb has been lowered for wheelchairs. B. In a parking bay. C. In a lay-by. D. Where the curb is raised. The correct answer is A. Where the curb has been lowered for wheelchairs. Explanation. Careless or thoughtless parking can create problems for other people. For example, if the curb has been lowered to enable wheelchair access, then keep it clear. Don't park on the pavement, as this may create danger for pedestrians, who will have to move into the road to pass your vehicle. Think about the effect your parking will have on others. You're giving a lesson in a car fitted with automatic transmission. What should you tell the pupil to do whenever the vehicle is stationary? A. Keep their foot firmly on the accelerator. B. Apply the parking brake fully. C. Put the gear selector in the R position. D. Put the gear selector in the D position. The correct answer is B. Apply the parking brake fully. Explanation. Fully applying the parking brake whenever your vehicle is stationary is important with an automatic car. This will reduce the possibility of the car creeping forwards when it's in gear. You're the first person to arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. No other vehicle is involved. The rider is unconscious and lying in the middle of the road. What should you do first? A. Warn other traffic. B. Give the rider reassurance. C. Move the rider out of the road. D. Clear the road of debris. The correct answer is A. Warn other traffic. Explanation. The motorcyclist is in a vulnerable position, exposed to further danger from traffic. You need to warn approaching traffic without putting yourself or anyone else at risk. Use your hazard warning lights and if you have one, a warning triangle to alert other road users. What's the most important factor affecting the speed you choose to drive? A. You should drive at a speed that doesn't impede other road users. B. You should be able to stop within the distance you can see to be clear. C. You should keep up with the traffic in front. D. You should drive at the speed limit wherever possible. The correct answer is B. You should be able to stop within the distance you can see to be clear. Explanation. You must always remain within the speed limit. But how fast you drive will depend on many other factors. Above all, you should never drive so fast that you can't stop within the distance you can see to be clear. What's the national speed limit on a two-way road outside a built-up area? A. 50 miles per hour. B. 30 miles per hour. C. 60 miles per hour. D. 70 miles per hour. The correct answer is C. 60 miles per hour. Explanation. The national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a single carriageway is 60 miles per hour. You don't have to drive at the speed limit. Use your judgment and keep within the speed limit while driving at a speed that suits the road, weather and traffic conditions. What does it mean when you see this line along the center of the road? A. The national speed limit applies. B. You may now overtake. C. There's a hazard ahead. D. Oncoming vehicles have priority. The correct answer is C. There's a hazard ahead. Explanation. A long white line with short gaps means that you're approaching a hazard. Don't cross the line unless you really need to. If you do need to cross the line, make sure that the road ahead is clear before doing so. You're approaching traffic lights. What should you do if the green light has been showing for some time? A. Maintain your speed. B. Be ready to stop. C. Brake hard. D. Accelerate hard. The correct answer is B. Be ready to stop. Explanation. The longer traffic lights have been on green, the greater the chance of them changing. Always allow for this as you approach the lights and be prepared to stop. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe UK Learning's YouTube channel. Share with your friends and family. 
don't forget to click the bell icon to get more videos. Your support will encourage us to make more videos. We wish you all the best for your exam.